Ed Harris almost spilled the beans. Season three, man, it's like... The actor nearly giving up a spoiler about the upcoming season of HBO's mind-bending hit Westworld, where Harris plays the mysterious Man in Black. I really ought to thank you, Dolores. At least for me, it was like, whoa, weird. Oh, weird? <laughs> Why do you say that? That's I can't really about talk it. about it. <laughs> now that is a great tease. There is much less mystery around the 69-year-old's current role as the iconic Atticus Finch in Aaron Sorkin's Broadway adaptation of the classic novel To Kill a Mockingbird. There's goodness in everyone. You just have to care enough to look for it. How do you find the experience? Well, I'm actually really enjoying it, you know. And once the show begins, it really carries you along, you know. It's, it's got a certain pace to it, and so it's kind of over before you know it in yeah. terms of acting it. And I'm on stage most of the time. You are, so yeah. So I don't really have any time to not be occupied. Gregory Peck first brought Atticus to life and won an Academy Award in the 1962 film version of the book. In late 2018, Sorkin brought the story to Broadway with Jeff Daniels in the Tony-nominated lead role. As Daniels' run was winding down, the producers turned to Harris. When you get the phone call about To Kill a Mockingbird, is that, yes, what an opportunity to play an icon, or is it like, ooh, boy? I kind of got a little excited because I've, you know, I've loved the story, I love the book, and I've loved the film. The film is very clear in my head, and I, the, my first thought was, okay, I gotta get Gregory Peck out of my head, you know. Right. I don't want to imitate him or be influenced by that, his performance. All men are created equal. When I read Aaron's script, it kind of helped that go away because it's, it's different. The character's a little more flawed than the pet character in the film. He's fighting to maintain his belief that there's goodness in everyone and that you know, things will change and there's hope. It means I don't want them hating people they disagree with. The play tells the famous story of Atticus Finch, a white lawyer defending a black man against a false murder charge in the segregated South of the 1930s. Am I overthinking it as I watch hearing some messages about today? as I listen to some of your speeches about marginalized people well, yeah, and why they behave the way they behave. I don't think you're overhearing it at all. I mean, he's very much intentional on Aaron's part, you know, when there's, especially in the summation when he says, you know, we can't go on like this. We have to heal this wound or we'll never stop bleeding, you know. The, the whole play is about a black man being brought up on charges that are false. You know, that's not... That's not something that's not happening today. Harris was raised in New Jersey, the middle of three boys. His father was a singer and actor, his mother a travel agent. Harris played freshman football at Columbia University in New York, but decided to give up the field for the stage. Now, I was working out for football and I just really, you know, it was 1971, 70, 71, there were a lot of things going on in the world. I remember sitting down on the back porch of the neighbor's house and I was just thinking, what am I going to do with myself if I'm not going to play football? And I, and maybe I could do that acting thing, man. I wasn't worldly enough to go to the actor's studio or Berghoff or anything like that. And I went out to Cal Arts to study keep studying later, you know, a couple more years. So clearly you felt that live rush that you feel tonight when you get up on the yeah. stage and to get that reaction. Well, you know, it's like scoring a touchdown, man, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After college, Harris migrated from the stage to television and then into film. His breakout came in the Academy Award-winning 1983 movie, The Right Stuff, where he played astronaut John Glenn. You are way out of line here. I'm out of line. Yes, sir. Despite the film's status as a bona fide classic, Harris passes it up when it comes on TV, all because of a tip he got on set from the director. Phil so Kaufman, he kept asking me to smile a lot, and it, it's a little hard for me to watch. Too much smiling. It's just a little odd. It's, sorry, I mean, I I'm, I'm, think it's a wonderful movie and I'm proud I'm part of it, but it's not easy to watch for me for some reason. Perhaps easier for Harris to watch are his Oscar-nominated roles in Apollo 13. We never lost an American in space. We're sure as hell not going to lose one on my watch. Or The Truman Show. 
We can't let him die in front of a live audience. He was born in front of a live audience. And his passion project, the 2000 film Pollock, which he also directed. Well, you know, the Pollock thing was such an obsession that really, I literally spent almost a decade building up to work, to, to shooting that, you know. What are you looking for? What are you pushing me for? So I guess that would be the one thing that I'm the most passionate about. And I ended up spending a lot of my own money on that film, you know, which... Really? My wife was going, Ed, and I said, you know, I have no choice in the matter, because I got to do it. Harris has been married to actress Amy Madigan for 36 years. The pair and their daughter Lily have managed a low-key celebrity life. You somehow have sort of taken the celebrity aspect out of it. Has that been by design Pretty to keep your life so. normal? Yeah. I live out in California, pretty low profile, but it's not like a big party time or anything. Yeah. All the things I did that were totally stupid and <laughs> would have caused some kind of problems I did before anybody knew who I was. So, and know. before social media. Thank <laughs> exactly. God, right? No kidding, man. <laughs> <laughs> As for that new season of Westworld, Harris finally cracked under questioning. Just a bit. Well, the man in black, I don't know about the black part of it oh. in season three. Even put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Almost got him. We'll just have to wait and see when Westworld comes back to HBO this year. In the meantime, you can see Ed into Kill a Mockingbird on Broadway right now. And his latest movie, The Last Full Measure, is out on January 24th. But wait, there's more. To hear Ed talk about his role in the highly anticipated new Top Gun movie coming out in June Check out our web extras at today.com slash Sunday. And don't forget to subscribe to the Sunday Sit Down podcast to hear the entire unedited interview with Ed Harris. You can find it on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get yours.